All right, this video will demonstrate the first of our combination circuits. And I'm going to use this example right here. All right, I've got this branch, like a parallel circuit, two resistors in this branch of the circuit. So they're actually in series with each other, but they're in parallel with the other two branches of this parallel circuit. So I've measured my resistors, I've got them all out. I won't demonstrate how to measure each individual one. It should be past that. The circuit calls for 10 volts. Set my meter up to measure voltage. Turn my box on. Get this adjusted, 10.2, that'll work. Turn that back off. And R1 is a 470 ohm resistor. It's in parallel, so there would be no, nothing special about it. One lead's gonna go from the positive strip here on the board to the negative strip on the board. R2 is a 470. And I'm going to connect it one end into the positive strip. And then the other end, I'm going to run out to the breadboard here, row 14. The next resistor is a 510. It's in series with R2 here. So I'm going to put one end of this 510 in the same row as the 470, row 14 and then I'm going to run it to the negative strip of the circuit. So when the current comes in the positive strip, it flows down to R2, which is the 470, through the 470 to row 14, and then from row 14 to the 510, on to the negative strip of the breadboard, then back to our ground. And then our final resistor, R4, is just in parallel with everything else. So I'm gonna put one end from the positive strip and the other end in the negative strip. Okay. So at this point, I can measure total resistance of the entire circuit. Put my positive wire there, negative wire in the negative strip. Set my meter up to measure resistance. connection. So try it again here. All right, and I've got 195.9 ohms. And this is very similar to a parallel circuit. Our lowest resistive branch should be this R1, the 470 ohm resistor. This branch is gonna add up to 980 ohms. So, so that number should be, you know, that's a valid number going by our parallel circuit rules of total resistance being lower than the lowest resistive branch. Okay. So we can put these back over here into our power source in our ground. I can turn my box on. Now I'm going to measure voltage drop. I'm going to start by measuring voltage drop of R1, the 470, being that it's in parallel with everything, it should drop source voltage, and it does. Okay. Voltage drops of R2 and 3, those two are in series with each other. That entire branch should drop source voltage, but the two resistors are going to share the voltage. So voltage drop for the entire branch is 10, right, just like it should be. Voltage drop of R2 
is going to be 4.8, and then voltage drop of R3 is 5.3. Add those up, and you roughly get our source voltage of 10 volts. Okay. And then finally, our last resistor, R4, it's in parallel, drops source voltage. Okay. Now, current. I've calculated the current in this circuit. It's less than 300 milliamps. So I'm going to take, set my meter up to measure current, leading the 300 milliamp slot, and I'm going to break the circuit. And I'm breaking it on the ground side here. I pull this wire out of my negative. I'm going to take my spare wire, stick it in the exact same spot that I pulled that wire out of the negative strip. One lead to the wire in the negative terminal of the box one lead to my spare wire and if I can get a good connection here I get 50 milliamps so that's the current for the entire circuit put that back together and the current through R1 Measure that same way as I have for every other circuit. Remove one end of the resistor, put my spare wire in the end in the exact same spot that I removed the resistor from. Go from the resistor to the spare wire, and I get 21.66 milliamps. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. Or R3 or R2. I'll pull one end out. Put my spare wire in the exact same place that I've removed the resistor from. Go from the resistor to the spare wire. And I get 10.42 milliamps. Okay. Pull that out, put it back together. Now the current for R3, since R2 and R3 are in series, all right. You use your series circuit current rule, and that states that current through a series circuit is the same everywhere. So the current that I measured through R2 is going to be the same through R3. I'll pull it out and measure it, but you wouldn't necessarily have to. And we should get the same 10.4 amps that we got through R2. We did put that back together and then finally the current through R4 remove one end insert my spare wire go from one the resistor to the spare wire and I get 19.56 milliamps okay so we add the current for R1 the current for R2 and the current for R4 add them up and we get our total current Notice I only said the current for R2 because the current flowing through R2 is the same current that's flowing through R3, so you can't add it twice. And that is our combination circuit.